into yourself spinning on your back and popping and locking and not a hope it's simple no. if you don't have a job starve get out of my constituency by force if necessary and starve that is quite simple are you really saying that of course i am my city is a growing city of course there are going to be some growing pains but what i tell people is this gather up your life savings buy yourself a piece of swamp drain it and get rid of the damn wildlife then apply for planning permission. Pretty soon you can... Personal bodyguards, massive fences, and a bigger collection of guns than the other guy. It stands to reason. No, 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 no! Keep them out of here! We do not want any more old folks! If there are any old people listening, go back to your homes. Florida does not want you. Please, die somewhere else. What's wrong with Nevada, Kansas? We want a river. We need a river. The That's Freedom the River. And what about the other crimes? It seems car crime, fashion crime, drugs, everything is on the rise. Absolutely. Of course it is. When I was in Uganda, people were poor, but they were happy. The more you have, the less you have. And that's kind of what I'm all about. There's satisfaction in spending all day weaving a basket, rather than just buying one at the store. At one point in Uganda, I saw a great lake of sand and a massive speaking dog. It was a dog of mine. Hey, come on, mister. Deliver these switch. What are you talking about? I'm talking about hopes, dreams, the magic of television. Especially public television. Puppets can say what men cannot. Yes, but how will that stop people taking baseball bats and pounding the living crap out of each other as I saw in a mother's PTA group meeting recently? Baseball is our national sport, our national pastime. Joining together as a... Digging a big ditch, a ditch of hope, which will flood into a river of freedom. So far, we've dug 17 feet. We're almost free, almost. When we are floating away in the Caribbean Sea, free to run things our way, singing Kumbaya in the sunshine. No school, no tax, free barbecue and pinball for everyone. Sophisticated entertainment. Yes, well, what about the little guy? What about the guy who is standing there saying, I like being part of America. I like it a lot. I get public radio. I can hear Maurice Chavez. Got people waiting, pal. A business selling flowers to people stuck in traffic. Three or four radios. Safe? I'm worried about gangs. Gangs are a myth put out by the liberal elite to patronize and demean the working man. I mean, what kind of right-minded youth from a poor background is going to spend his time stealing things and posing in silly clothes when he could be getting ahead with a minimum wage job and making his parent proud? The dream of America is to live in a duplex and share a yard. Why would anyone want to threaten that great future? Answer me that and I'll show you a green dog. And speaking for the underdog, the foundation I set up with my trust fund we believe gangs are a valid expression of a people's identity, a grouping, a community within a community. Gangs are a way to be noticed in the boxy suburbs. You scream out, rather than urinate at the edge of your camp like a proud native. We spray paint our names on the walls of the mall to ward off predators. And that's supposed to terrify people? No, no. We believe passionately in non-violent solutions to life's problems. Gangs have to learn to love to be inclusionary. We'd award badges to good gangs and give bad gangs a silly hat to wear. It would give people something to feel a part of. Kill with kindness, not a garden tool. Yes, but what about the guy getting beaten up on the street? Or the man having his motorcycle stolen? What about him? Or her? Some of the best bikers are really women. Anyone can join our group. This is about poor people getting together. But your father owns half of Florida. How are you part of the working class? Like I said, 
I'll pick up a hitchhiker in my convertible any day. The other day I picked up a young woman and we discussed a non-violent solution to war. We called it peace. Your father is a great man. He's done more for the arms trade in this state than anyone else, no! myself included. And you shame him with this socialist, jiggery, pokery hoot nanny. America needs hope. Not songs or a smoke to send food to the poor. Songs will get you nowhere. This country needs something to aim for, like being rich and laughing at poor people. Or being in government and laughing at the electorate. Now, now, Mr. Shrub, let's not make this personal. I appreciate your attempt to press the point, but we are here to press the issue. My city is in trouble, and I think we're not really providing any serious solutions. So far, we've got secessions, rearing its ugly head for the first time in a century and a half. We've got ignore it, and we've got give everyone a flower. You're all a, a little unrealistic, yes? Nice. Uh, come, come on, man. Yeah. 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 Maurice? Hey. Not to say over-opinionated and moronic, Mr. Grayshaw, how do we stop people running amok in the city with machine guns and heavy artillery? You've got to give a man a chance. Prisons are overflowing with wasted potential. Make the guilty men You're innocent once more. Them. Free them from themselves. How? How on earth do you do that? Oh, how you could let them all Marvelous. Great. That's a sensible plan. Then they wouldn't be guilty anymore. We've been doing that for years, you idiot. Yeah. How do you think we'd keep prison calls? Hey, come them? on, mister. Deliver these quick. We say that for education. But, as in most things, we in government are saving money so that you don't have to. When we spend less money on services, more goes to administration salaries and expenses, which helps make lives a lot less difficult for everybody. It's about sharing. Sharing your taxes out amongst the select few. That's why I worked so hard at school, so I could reap the rewards now. Mm, I thought you worked hard at school because the other kids laughed at you and called you a square. That, that's a damn lie. They called me work hard. They called me the bat because my voice didn't break until I was 19. So, Mr. Shrub, I take it you don't believe in regulation. I believe in giving people a chance, not tying them down with lots of needless regulations. The fact is, business is run by moral people who won't do anything illegal or try to get rich quickly. But since you got elected, Vice City has been characterized by a government who cut aid to the poor, offered tax breaks to the rich, and paid people to dump toxic waste near schools. Yes, we've made a lot of progress. And up on Capitol Hill, you were instrumental in pushing through a bill allowing the manufacture and sale of giggle cream, a dessert with potential lethal consequences. Uh, not true. Only 23 people have died, and several of them probably deserved it. So, with people being set such a bad example by big business, how are they supposed to respect each other, to act safely in society? And how are they policed by a demoralized and underfunded police force? Well, I'm afraid that's apparently quite a difficult question, but my solution is easy. I'm gonna talk for a long time about a subject not in any way related, and pretty soon people will forget all about it. I'll remind people that I have a great haircut, and that under my stewardship, my city has had, on average, 15% better weather than before, while crime rates only go up if you don't turn the graph upside down. Turn it upside down? Got people waiting, pal. For me, Alex Shrub. Vote Shrub for president, and you'll have a friendly face in the White House. A man you can trust. A local man who likes golf and laughing and photo opportunities at your store or place of business. Just send me a letter. I'll send you an automated photocopied response. We call it democracy, and that's where the money goes. Uh, just a don't, minute. Don't interrupt. Let me finish. But you're not. And this man won't let me speak. You, Shorty, shut up and let me speak. I'm taller than him, ladies and gentlemen, by at least three inches, which means I'm a lot more respectable looking. Everyone knows politicians lie and steal and cheat, but at least with me in charge, you know I look good and I have a very supercilious manner. Besides which, I've been abroad and I prefer it here because I'm a man of the people. Vote shrub. You'll get richer and you won't feel guilty about it. Enough! We're running out of time, and you completely failed to answer the question. I'm a professional. That's my job. <sighs> and Mr. Hickory, what about you? All right. These problems are typical of what happens with an open hole or two to know it. The state is filling up with trash. People who can't tell the difference between a swamp and a marsh. Guys who don't know the first thing about the legality of marrying within the family. That's why we need a river. 
people, I'm telling you, pick up your spades, go into your garden, start digging as deep and as far as you can. Get out Pretty of soon way. the whole state will be flooded and ruined, and then they'll have to leave. We must build a moat to the north or they will come down and ruin this great state. And Mr. Hickory, were you born in Florida? <laughs> what a stupid question, I'm all the cheek. Were you? Of course not. No one's been born in Florida since 1877, but I've been here for five years, which is a very long time. Yes, it is. A very long time. Almost as long as this show. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Pressing Issues with me, Maurice Chavez. What are you waiting around for? Me, delivery. In this episode of Pressing the Issue, we had Alex Shrug, Callum Crayshaw, and John Florida Hickory discussing it. I guess you've all got to make up your own minds. Should we be as wet as fish or a corrupt money-grabbing thief? Gentlemen, I feel we really got somewhere. And that Vice City and people everywhere know a lot more than they did before we began. And now, over to Jonathan and Melissa to talk to you about public radio in your area. You're listening to VCPR, the radio station for disoriented and unrealistic college professors who wear fuzzy sweaters and find everything terribly interesting. I'm Michelle Montanius. And I'm Jonathan Freeloader. Public radio is very important. You may have heard my recent hour-long story about my hike in the park. That was fascinating and very important for everyone, even the blind. Play a selection, Jonathan. I think this is the part where I came to the big tree. I almost felt like I was there. You won't get this kind of nauseating detail on commercial radio. VCPR is 100% commercial free. Absolutely nothing interrupts your enjoyment of our fine programming and ability to tackle the important things like Jonathan's Walk in the Park. But we need you. Think of yourself as a member of this station, except you aren't allowed in the doors. That's an important metaphor for life. Yes, how wonderful would it be to own an hour of this radio station? We just got an enormous pledge from Farewell Ranch. That's great. Farewell Ranch is a great place to take your loved one. Just dial 866-9-BURY-ME. Remember, VCPR is one late faster to deliver this crap on time. Pressing issues. Thank you, guys. So, we're back on pressing issues. Just one of many fine shows you'll hear if you have the patience to listen to public radio. Anyway, morality. What is it? Why do we need it? Our ancestors, shortly after discovering fire, built tools to beat each other over the head and discover how to make meat to celebrate with afterwards. Then Columbus came over, shut down the pilgrim discourse. Why? All very confusing if you ask me. And you did. And I asked myself, that is a perfect subject for a region-wide discussion show, which is very lucky because I happen to host one. To discuss the subject of morality, we have firebrand preacher, Pastor Richards, the head of the Pastor Richards Salvation Statue Organization, a group which plans to raise enough money to build the statue of Pastor Richards himself. Mark K. I don't know. We're deep in act. Hey, come on, mister. Deliver these quick. We have Barry Stark author of the book, As Nature Intended. He's the editor of Vice City's Naturist News, and is working feverishly, it says here, to bring more nude recreation to Vice City. To protect the dignity of our other panelists, we place Mr. Barry Stark behind a divider. I'm naked back here. It's my right as a person. Yes. Let's start with the obvious, yes? Is it moral to be naked? Yes. You can't stop me. Well, I'm a mother. So I have to deal with this issue every day. My adorable kids have learned that it's wrong to be naked. When it's bath time, they know to put on a bathing costume. That's, that's also the reason there are no mirrors in my house. Nudity leads to bad, naughty things. Maurice, if I may interrupt, I haven't worn clothes since 1982. Clothes are seriously unnatural. Didn't you guys learn anything from the 60s? I had a revelation when I was in holiday in Germany. I'd always felt very constricted. Then it hit me like a slippery fish. Clothes are plain wrong. When you're born, you're not wearing any clothes. When you die, you're not wearing any clothes. I'm going to have to interrupt you there. What if you die at work? 
What if an enormous piece of machinery falls on you while you're working? Clothes lead to immorality. Nudity stops people from fighting. Have you seen an issue of National Geographic lately? People around the world are nude. You don't want to shoot a machine gun or a howitzer or a flamethrower if you're naked. They could burn or scold in quite a personal fashion, quite frankly. Have you been to the zoo? Animals are naked. If everyone were naked, there'd be no war. Everyone's complaining about crime and the theft of cars in the city. No one's ever stolen my car. No one's ever pickpocketed me. They've never even tried. That's because you're a degenerate loony. If the police were naked, it would set a great example to everyone. You can direct traffic and donuts entirely in the buff. Maurice, this kind of immoral behavior is exactly why I'm building the Pastor Richard Salvation statue. Noah had an ark, Texans had the Alamo, and I am building a highly fortified structure in my image. Simple. This 50-story statue will be able to deflect alpha, gamma, and beta radiation. The day is coming, and coming soon, where the artificial suns will rain down to punish the degenerates of this city. But you can save yourself. The Pastor Richard Salvation statue will be a completely self sufficient community. We have canned food rations, private living quarters, and enough supplies to survive happily the predicted 40,000 years of nuclear winter. In phase two, and with funding from NASA, we will equip this massive statue. Get these delivered nice and hot. Fan, we will load up the statue with all of the people who have saved themselves through generous donations, blast into space, and colonize Saturn with a race of morally correct, affluent people ruled by me. Many I mean, other be naked bad, people? Huh? No, turd brain. It's morally corrupt people like you we're shielding ourselves from. Liberals, degenerates, the Welsh. They're the ones responsible for the nightmare of our city is today. The crime in the streets, the parties, the children born out of wedlock to a future of hopelessness. Anyone who does not agree with me is mentally sick and should be shot, I'm afraid to say. We need to build a place to escape these transgressions. <laughs> That's extreme stuff, Pastor. But we'll leave amateur eugenics for a minute and ask our other panelists. Jan, you're a mom, so you know everything. What is your thought on all this? And do you think Pastor Richard stole his ideas from a movie or book? Well, yes, I am a mom. My kids are very special. So special, they go to special classes. Now, I, I teach my kids history to give them perspective. Last night I was telling them about how Magellan sailed around the Strait of Magellan and met some friendly natives that gave him supplies. Um, then he had to kill all of them. You'll never get a promotion unless you species that eat their children to protect them. Th this is especially true of hamsters. It's about putting the family first. That's really important to me and where a lot of my morality comes from. And if you don't like it, find your own husband and stay away from mine, okay? Okay, but, and excuse me if I sound a little confused here, but I don't think I understand. Now, my morality comes from looking at history and biology and working out what's best for my kids and screw anyone else. That's what this country's all about. I mean, I mean, I saw the hippies. What a load of claptrap. What, what's your kid gonna do at a school with a name like Moonbeam or Wave or Horseradish or whatever they call it? How can you take your kid to a Little League game when you live in a communal farm growing drugs? It's awful. You need deliverance now. What is it now? Looking down on others. Yes, I think I can see that now. Moving on. Pastor Richards, in your book, you talk about putting yourself first and how people should not make sacrifices or help those in need. Do you want to elaborate? Oh, that's right. People need to learn how to take care of themselves and not depend on others. If you read chapter 45 of my book, I talk about how being selfish is a virtue. The best thing you can do for someone who needs help is to tell them to help themselves. That builds moral character. Morality, Maurice. There's not much left in this city. Every time a culture has taken on the doctrine of helping your fellow man, we get thrown into the dark age. Look at Russia. They keep trying to help each other out, extend a hand to a neighbor, and guess what? Every ten years, someone's invading, burning down their homes, and taking their toilet paper. Napoleon, Stalin, Attila the Hun, all of them. After you read my book, you will understand. I may have been born in the sea, but I'm no dummy. Are we going to talk about being naked? Yeah, <laughs> soon, Barry. Uh, keep your hair on and uh, uh, calm down, please, my friend. <clears throat> Divorce rates are up. Standardized test scores are down. Vampire sightings at the mall. Can the family be safe? Or, to put it another way, 
If we're meant to be monogamous, why weren't we born already married? Jan, over to you. Well, since I'm a happily married mother, I know the family unit is the basis of all society. Even when my husband is working late or away on an extended business trip to Hawaii with his secretary, I understand just how important the family unit is in life. He's working hard so I can get another station wagon with even more wood on it. Go on. Tell me more about your family. Um, well, I like to compare it to nature. After all, it is one planet, even if we don't just want to maim and kill each other, especially me. Now, look at sharks and sandworms. Well, among my hobbies, besides making babies and criticizing people, is biology. You learn so much from nature. Uh, people these days, they don't grow their own food. They can barely get out of their recliners and make it to the supermarket. <laughs> Let me tell you, there is nothing super about that place. Now, kids these days don't know how to preserve and can their own food. Now, no wonder all they want to do is play video games or hang out with their friends. What is it, the degenerate? What are you waiting around for? Oh, we delivered. We have regulations about that sort of thing. But you let a naked man on. Yeah, he's behind the screen. You can't see. It's not that exciting. Imagine a flabby guy with a ponytail and a nasty rash. You'll get the picture. Imagine one. I married one. Anyway, what was I saying? Uh, you were discussing the Degenetron, which I understand is a games machine. Then you swore. I'm sorry. It makes me so mad. I mean, what I heard my son, Patrick the Third. I heard him using slang words in the house the other day. Rad and cool and stick it. I mean, I beat him to within an inch of his life, and he will never make that mistake again. Uh, American should be spoken properly. What? No, don't interrupt me. I've got children, you know. Please. This is really important. It's about the family. Look, look. Nobody knows how to cook anymore. Nobody knows how to kill anymore. Nobody knows how to kill dinner. My daddy was a very wise man before that tractor pull accident. My daddy taught me how to slaughter a pig. That's very useful information. Oh, sure, I was a little nervous at first, but he put me in a room with a fork and a fat sow and told me he'd be back in an hour for some fat back and hog gels. As a mother, I'm proud to say I throttled the life out of that little piggy. I did it for my family, and I'll do it again. Feeding the family is my job as a mother. Daddy earns money and goes away with his secretary, and Mommy provides dinner and keeps a brave face on things, even though her heart is breaking. Where are my pills? Barry, you look like you've got something to say. I agree. Statistics show that families that spend time together naked are the best kinds of families. You see, social class distinctions disappear. Hey, come on, mister. Deliver these quick. Black or white? It doesn't matter, because we're all naked. Designer clothes? Try designer nudism. My body was made by the best designer around. Mother Nature. That's why we're lobbying to build a naked casino in Vice City, so old people can gamble naked, and poor people can lose hope in the buff. It is written, chapter 23, verse 5 of my book, He that gambles his money away is a fool, but he who believes in me will go to spend eternity in space with other affluent, well-to-do people. It's that simple. Do what I say, and you won't have to think for yourself. Oh, but I think it is, Pastor. We look around. Nudie clubs, discos, drinking. Do people want to be moral? Can you legislate morality? Can we tell people how to live their lives? Absolutely. Yes, of course I can. Just look at prohibition or, or the cultural revolution in China. We can learn a lot from history. Chairman Mao or Stalin, they purged their lands of degenerates and intellectuals, the scum of the earth in my book. And look at the great societies they built. People want to be told how to act. And most people are idiots. So that's exactly who my teachings appeal to. This lol. Single moms have obese kids, it's a fact. While rich people have a lot of guilt, unnecessarily, in my opinion. I agree. I. A treat when precious makes a poopy. My kids are big bone, and they eat prunes every day. But that's what's wrong with this country. All of this emphasis on being thin and healthy. 
When my children are hungry, I hand them a spear and send them out to the park to catch their own food. They're learning how to be self-sufficient. Yesterday, my youngest, Jono, killed the postman, but at least he was trying. So I gave him a cuddle, I told him to hit daddy next time he comes home late smelling of cheap perfume.